Windows 11. It promised to bring a load of UI enhancements and a better, more cohesive experience. Yet this seems to be very surface level only, probably for old advertisements. The deeper you go, you'll find ugly old menus, outdated apps that were forgotten about by the designers at Microsoft, as well as things that literally got worse in Windows 11 compared to Windows 10. So in this video, I'll show you 20 apps and utilities that replace default existing apps built into Windows, with modern aesthetic versions that should have been there in the first place. So with that, let's begin. Oh actually, before we begin, a few apps in this video are mentioned in previous videos, if you've happened to watch those. The majority of the ones that are mentioned in this video are new, just thought to mention that, because it'd be wrong of me to leave them out for modern apps roundup, for Windows 11 otherwise. Anyway, they're all free and chapters are below, on with the video. Number 1. Null Soft Shell Ah yes, the Windows 11 context menu, something that actually takes a step backwards from Windows 10, with the supposedly more modern menu actually offering less options when you right click. So in order to fix this, get the Null Soft Shell application, which adds a Windows 10 functionality back, while also providing you with some nice modern icons as part of the context menu. Number 2. Fluent Weather So I went into the weather app in Windows the other day, and I have to say, I was disgusted. This application has one of the most ugly looking UIs I've ever seen on any modern system, is super laggy, and even has a shame to serve me ads when checking the weather. Let me repeat that again. Microsoft is serving ads to you for checking the weather in their own operating system, which is used by corporations around the world in an application they built themselves. <sighs> to fix this nonsense, get the Fluent Weather application, which will provide you with a much better and more modern weather alternative, compared to that of the default one. Some of the key features of the application include the fact that it has an edge-to-edge -edge design, where the background changes, quite literally, depending on the weather, the fact that you get lock screen support with this app, if that's something you're interested in, as well as a few settings that you can play around with. Oh, and the cherry on top being the fact that it's open source. Number 3. The Files application Alright, so I've featured the Files application a few times on different videos, as well as making a dedicated dedicated video on it, but I had to mention it in this video as it's pretty compelling from a modern design standpoint. In summary, this application offers a more modern file explorer alternative, with additional features such as out of columns view, more intuitive controls when interacting with various UI elements, as well as various quality of life features, such as having smooth scrolling, split tabs, an actual preview window, and tab windows if you're still on Windows 10 for whatever reason. The only downside I'd say with this application is the performance and potential reliability issues, because not only can the application be pretty hungry on your CPU and RAM usage, but can also bug down occasionally, and even just refuse to work or copy files. While I haven't experienced these issues myself during my personal usage, it is something to consider. Number 4. Ambi So I've covered various ambient noise websites and web-based extensions previously, but what about something that is local instead of going onto the internet? Well that's where the Ambi application comes in. Overall, it's a very simple, locally stored application that allows you to play various ambient noise and white noise nature sounds, all while having a super modern design. There's quite a lot of different sounds to choose from and it's easy to quickly open the app and start playing sounds you like. Another handy feature of the application is the fact that it can even act as a replacement to the Windows Clock app by allowing you to set timers for how long the sound should play for until they stop for example. And if you go to the focus section, you can even make use of the Pomodoro technique by having the app automatically set up break and work periods which might be quite useful for some people out there. Though admittedly, it is one of the few freemium softwares on this list, so some features like layering sounds are paid if that's something you'd use in a local offline ambient noise app, so there is that to consider. Number 5. Modern flyouts. Now while white noise and ambient nature sounds aren't for everyone, what is for everyone though is modern flyouts. So Windows 11 does have some redesigned flyouts that overall match a Windows 11 aesthetic and are quite modern and passable for this video I'd say. But if you remember in Windows 10, though the style did look a bit outdated for the time, it was quite a bit more functional as you had the playback controls present in the menu as well as a nice picture or icon to give you some additional context on the media that you were playing. Well this is gone completely in Windows 11, so to get it back, be sure to download the modern flyouts application, which essentially gives you the same functionality that you had in Windows 10, but in Windows 11. It also adds extra functionality with the fact that it's highly customizable regarding its UI and transparency, allowing you to reposition the UI wherever you like on screen, alongside giving you control over how long the flyouts remain on screen. Oh, and it's also open source as a bonus. Number 6. Auto Dark Mode So this is also another application that I've mentioned here and there in various other videos, and for good reason. It does what it says on the tin, and automatically changes from light mode to dark mode based on the sunset. This happens fully automatically, affects your whole system and you have a whole load of settings that you can mess around with as well, and I mean a lot of settings. With this functionality, you can really customise the application to suit your needs. Definitely a must have if you're someone who started on light mode, converted to dark mode over the years and now just want your theme to match the time of day accordingly. Number 7. Fluent Search There are many Windows search replacements out there, but if you're looking for a highly modern one that can also perform other functions, then I'd have to recommend the Fluent 
in search application. Yes, Power Toys does have a similar feature, but I feel that its interface is a bit more static compared to this application. Though, it does depend what you're after really, because there's also the Flow Launcher application that I mentioned in a previous video, which will also provide you with a modern Windows search replacement that also happens to integrate into the Everything Search tool as well. Overall, I'd say use Power Toys if you value something that's not an external app and is most optimized. Get the Flow Launcher app with the Everything plugin if you want something that's minimal, but also provide you with a very powerful file indexing search tool. And if you want something that is a bit of a powerful aesthetic all-rounder, then Fluent Search is the one you want. The reason for this is because a key strength of Fluent Search, in my opinion, is the aesthetics, while also providing you with smart contextual previews and information depending on what you type, which I think is pretty neat. Though, I don't think there's an everything plugin, as far as I'm aware, so you might have to stick with Flow Launcher for that one. Number 8, NanoZip. Now, it turns out that quite a lot of people use a compression software to zip and unzip files, and while the likes of 7-Zip and WinRAR are very popular, both are heavily outdated in regards to their design, and that's where this app comes in. Now, NanaZip is a simple application that provides you with many of the zip and compression capabilities that you'd find with the early apps mentioned, but with some quality of life features, such as having light and dark modes, clear UI symbols for various actions you can take when using the tool, and it's also open source as well. Number 9. Image Glass You have a few options that are built into Windows when it comes to viewing your images, whether that be the actual photos application or the films and TV app. Now while both of these applications are alright, there are better alternatives out there, one of which being the Image Glass application. This this is a free and open source image viewer for Windows that also has a whole load of additional features. Some of its key features include a more modern UI, richer metadata on your images throughout the application, various window viewing modes, a good amount of editing features, as well as a range of options in the settings of the application. So yeah, overall a very feature packed application, and once you tweak it to your liking and get used to the various keyboard shortcuts, then this application can serve you very well. Number 10. Screenbox. VLC Media Player. A great application that many people download, and while super functional, it does look a bit dated at times, especially with the stock UI. While in this case, check out the Screenbox application, which provides you with both a super modern UI while also having its code being based off the VLC application as mentioned on the store page when you download it. Again, there's nothing wrong with the default photos app or the films and TV app, terrible name, but yeah, where's the fun in that I guess? Though, if you're still not tempted away from VLC after years of use, then be sure to check out this video in the cards above, which uncovers the secrets of VLC with more than 15 hidden features you didn't know about. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, so as a bonus one, I'd like to throw in the OnlyOffice set of applications. There's not much to discuss here, but if you're not aware, OnlyOffice is an open source free alternative to the Microsoft Office set of applications. Yeah, sure, Microsoft Office isn't exactly that outdated in regards to its UI, but it is paid. <coughs> And the other alternative is the LibreOffice set of applications, which I've spoken about in this video, link in the card to that by the way, but after trying both of them out, OnlyOffice is the better choice for most people, as the UI is far more modern and superior compared to that of LibreOffice. Anyway, back to the main apps. Number 11, FileLite. Now this one is a bit of an underdog, but I can't believe that it isn't mentioned more. This app is super simple and a lightweight utility for Windows that allows you to see the storage of a drive or folder of your choosing in a bit more of a visual way, compared to that of the Windows settings or the properties menu in the file explorer for example. Once you load it, you'll get an option to scan your users folder which is known as your home folder, your entire drive or specific folder path of your choosing. Once you do, the software will then begin the scanning process. After this, you'll then be presented with your files on the left and a concentric ring graph on the right. As you click through your folders on the left, the graph on the right updates accordingly, showing you a nice breakdown of the size of each of your directories and folders. But the best bit about this is the concentric graph on the right is in interactable as well, meaning that you can hover over certain segments to reveal more information about each of those folder locations. And clicking on the segment will open the folder and dig further into the folder structure as a graph updates accordingly. I'm sure you get the idea by now. In regards to additional options, there aren't all too many, but you can exclude certain folder locations, as well as change the colors and other visuals such as the number of secondary levels that are shown for each directory. Number 12, KeePass XC. So I covered the KeePass app in another video previously, link in the cards to that by the way, but in that video, I was informed in the comments that there was a more modern version of it called KeePass XC. Now if you don't know what KeePass is, it's an application that allows you to store your passwords locally on your device and stores this in an encrypted database file, meaning that you can lock your passwords with a password. Not for everyone, but if you want to store your passwords locally and back them up every so often, then KeePass is a great option, and KeePass XC is exactly the same as KeePass but with a far more modern UI and has the same level of file support as that of the older application, which still works just fine in 2020. 
25 by the way. This way, if you want to switch between them, then that's totally possible with no strings attached. Number 13, PDF viewers. Now when it comes to PDF viewers and editors, browsers are generally okay and get the job done. But if you want somewhere where you have a list of PDF history and a few more comprehensive controls, then be sure to check out the PDF gear application. Sure, there are many other great alternatives out there and I've covered a few of them, like that of the Oklahoma PDF app and the Sumatra PDF app in another video, link in the cards above to that by the way. But overall, considering a complete package for viewing, editing and regarding the design, I'd have to give it to the PDF gear application. It just seems to be the most matched to that of the rest of the Windows 11 aesthetic, which is what this video is about. Number 14, Nora. Okay, so I might be slightly cheating with this one, as at the time of recording, it is still in development, but you can download the exe file from GitHub and when you do, you'll be able to use this highly modernized media player. I'm not too sure how great this application is from a more technical point of view, but I have to say, this app has to be one of the best looking music apps for Windows you'll ever find. It's super modern in design with its light mode, dark mode and accented color mode as well, which picks a color from the album art of the song you're playing to affect various parts of the application's UI. Not only this, but the animations are also really well done, as is the mini pop-out media player. Now it's clear that they still have some work to do, especially when it comes to navigating between the different panels, but with some more fine tuning and work, this could be a very compelling application indeed. Number 15, Fluent Info. Another aspect of the Windows operating system that people use all the time is the properties menu in the file explorer. Now I would have to say that the default properties menu in the file explorer hasn't failed me personally over the years and just gets the job done. However, pulling up this screenshot should tell you everything that you need to know. Yep, it literally hasn't changed in over a decade, apart from that banner at the top. The Fluent Info application aims to solve this by allowing you to see the properties of your file in a more modern fashion that matches the Windows 11 aesthetic. Not to mention, it has some settings that you can configure, so if you want a raw wall of information about your files, then you can do that in here too. It's also open source as a bonus. Number 16, Local Send. As the name suggests, this is an installable application that allows you to send and receive files, documents, or anything else for that matter, between different devices peer to peer. It works across all major operating systems and it's open source, which is great for an application like this. There's not much more to add to this app really, as it's just that simple, and with a super clean UI, it easily makes a cut onto this list. Though I would have to say, honorable mentions would be the pair drop tool and the land drop tool. The pair drop tool is great, but web based and less of an installable application, and the land drop tool would have been my choice for this video with its highly modern interface, but with the privacy fine print not being as clear as local send, it gets a few points docked in my opinion. Though you might not be bothered by this all too much, so yeah, there are a few options for you here. Number 17, Fluencast. Podcasts. Many people like to listen to them, but many people are also using outdated software that looks super ugly as well. Well, if that's you, then be sure to check this application out, which is a free podcast application that has an absolutely amazing UI. It supports light mode, dark mode, and features like playback history, auto downloads, chapters, picture in picture, and it's just a joy to use. Not to mention that Windows doesn't even come with a built-in podcast app. So if you're looking for the best podcast app for Windows that looks apart, then I'd say it has to be this one. Number 18, Twinkle Tray and Click Monitor DDC. So if you've used an external monitor before, you might know that navigating the controls on them can be pretty tricky and their interfaces, well their overlays more so, are some of the worst in computing history as they obviously never get updated and are often outdated to begin with, which is a bit annoying as monitors are one of those devices that get used for many years into the future as typically nothing goes wrong with them. Well, there's two apps I would recommend as a solution to the most common control that you'll adjust on your monitor, the brightness. The first app allows you to control the brightness of your external monitor using your mouse via a dialog box, while the second allows you to control it via keyboard shortcut or by simply just scrolling with your mouse. Starting with the first application, this app is called Twinkle Tray. This will provide you with a modernized brightness slider that lives in your system tray, matches the Windows aesthetic, and allows you to control the brightness of your external monitor without having to get out your chair and fiddle with some buttons around the back of your screen. But if you're a supreme power user, I'd suggest taking a look at downloading the Click Monitor DDC application. Yes, this application is a slightly older one and doesn't really match the Windows 11 aesthetic, but the reason that it's on this list is that you don't ever have to interact with the interface after you set it up, allowing you to control the brightness of your external monitor with the press of a single keyboard key, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Or if you don't like that, you can always just use your mouse to toggle between two different preset brightness values of your choosing, or control your monitor in notched intervals. I mean, this app isn't really all that supported anymore, but you can still download it from various places and works just fine on my laptop running Windows 11. I'll leave a link to the download page below the like button either way. Anyway, after you download it, run it and set it up via the wizard as you would do with any other application and then head into your taskbar. Here you'll see some numbers. If you click on it, it'll open this cluttered menu for controlling various things of your monitor. To declutter this, deselect this 
this option regarding the color controls and then the checkbox for the volume slider and the volume icon. This looks quite a bit better but again we won't really be needing to go into this menu again as we'll now set up the keyboard shortcuts. To do this click the square in the top left corner. This will open another cluttered menu but again this is a set and forget thing. Here you can change the icons that appear in your taskbar and the colors of the icons and sliders in the panel that shows up if you decide to click on the icon. Anyway moving on to the side panel you'll see a manage mouse page. From here you'll get to choose the increments in which your monitor adjusts its brightness if you scroll over it. And this box shows two defined brightness values that the monitor will switch between when you click on the icon with your middle mouse wheel. Below that you have an option to have the keyboard shortcuts in combination with your mouse wheel. So as you can see if I select the following and hold the alt and windows key while scrolling up it will make my brightness increase by 10 increments each time. While the second line states that if I do the same thing and scroll down you'll reduce the brightness instead. Though if you want to do this via keyboard shortcuts for example then you can do this in the manage hotkeys section. From here you can then assign a keyboard shortcut to change a brightness up or down without using the mouse at all. So I have mine set up to control F6 for brightness down and control F7 for brightness up. From here you can then use another software of your choosing. So this could be power toys or auto hotkey for example to assign this key to a single key instead. There are quite a lot of apps out there that allow you to do this sort of key rebinding that you can find online. So yeah quite a bit long winded but hopefully you get the idea. Let me know if you want a video on keyboard remapping with the auto hotkey tool if you like and I can try and make that happen. Number 19 ear trumpet. Though following in a similar fashion but this time for audio I'd also recommend the ear trumpet application. It's a simple app that adds an icon to the taskbar that allows you to control the sound level of different sound sources quickly without having to right click the sound icon and then press open volume mixer. A simple and clean solution really. Number 20 Zettler. Now some of you may know this one but I feel I had to mention it as it's a bit of an underdog app I feel. Zettler is a free and open source markdown note taking application. Rich text editor that can also be more code and syntax based if you like that can also be used as a publishing workbench. Honestly just check this application out as I don't think I can do justice for it in this video if you're looking for an application like this. Especially considering the fact that it's heavily privacy orientated as well. The fact that it can be customized down to the very last pixel and with the UI being super modern in appearance that actually makes you want to use it are big wins too. Some of the key features include split screen support, latex math support, mermaid chart support and the list goes on and on. If you're doing anything remotely professional regarding note taking or publication specifically then I would definitely recommend checking this out. Oh and honorable mentions would probably go to the open source logsec application alongside obsidian. Personally I've been using obsidian a fair bit recently as my note taking app of choice after recently switching to it from OneNote as I value having control and access to the raw notes themselves more so than before. I mean I would have mentioned obsidian in place of Zettler for this video but I have far bigger plans for obsidian so you might have to wait for that one. Either way all three are super clean note taking and productivity apps that you should consider checking out. But modern apps are only part of the Windows app story. Be sure to check out this video for a whole load more or if that's not interesting to you then be sure to check out this playlist instead which will help you relax with a load of boredom curing websites. Anyway like share and subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you later.